So you just have this couple little puffs. Something's not right there, too. Now, people who say, OK, we heard ex they, they claim they heard explosions. And so therefore, it must be bombs in the building. They're starting with assuming what did it, and then going back to assuming what problem they're solving, instead of determining first what happened. Well, if you recall, um, blasting zone ahead, you know, turn off cell phones and two-way radios just in case it trigger something, how are you going to get everyone to unknowingly turn off all their cell phones in southern Manhattan for weeks ahead while they prepare the site? But there were sounds of explosions. Bombs go boom, but not everything that goes boom is a bomb. Think of putting an egg in your microwave oven. Turns out there's a lot of folks who talked about these Scott packs exploding at ground level, sitting on the fire trucks. There's a lot of testimony here. We don't need to go over it. But there's various firefighters who talked about hearing these Scott tanks exploding. All of a sudden, it sounded like, I don't know where the subway is, but it sounded like a subway collision, a bomb. And it, it, it was just pounding, boom, boom, boom. And I, I literally thought the subway had exploded and, and all the cars were pissing the land on top of us. It was so loud. I was standing next to One World Trade Center and then all of a sudden I heard rumbling and we all started running away from it. The glass like blew out and threw me onto the sidewalk and I, I couldn't see for like 20 seconds. Bottom. Yes, I was right there. I was, in the, I was down in the basement, came down, all of a sudden the elevator blew up smoke. I dragged the guy out, his skin was hanging off, and I dragged him out, and I helped him out of the, out of, to the ambulance. Pfeiffer was the first chief into the building. Right away, a guy from the Port Authority told him the damage was somewhere above the 78th floor. But all you had to do was look around. It was obvious something had happened right there in the lobby. Obviously having a bit of trouble right now maintaining our location because we just heard one more explosion. That's about the fourth one we've heard. The police are telling us they're either car bombs or they are uh, simply cars that have overheated so much that they're exploding. But every time one of those happens, there's a flurry of activity. I think a bomb went off in the lobby first, then a plane hit the building. Then another plane hit the other building. And But when I was coming through the doors on the other side of the Trade Center, Something, either they blew the lobby up or, or something, because it blew the glass out of the doors and knocked us all down. What happened? It was an explosion. It was in the lobby and it fucking, the, the third explosion, the whole lobby collapsed on us. What was it like? What was it like? 
horrible. It's like horrible. hell. You don't the, want whole, to know. the whole building just collapsed on us inside the lobby. Was that a secondary explosion? Yes, it was. That was so the was planet problem. Yeah, definitely a secondary explosion. But we was inside waiting to go upstairs. And on the way upstairs, the whole fucking thing blew. And we just, we just collapsed on everybody inside the lobby. Similar to the first tower coming down, secondary? I don't know about the first one, but I know the second one was, it was terrible. Then there was a third one, too, after that one. Third yeah. explosion after that? Yes, sir. Everybody was inside the building, the way to go upstairs, and they, they, just, they just let loose. Everything just let loose inside the building. So what, what you told me is that there was a plane or whatever hit the building, then a the secondary explosion. It was like three explosions after that. We came in after the after the fire. We came when the fire was going on already. We was in the staging area inside the building, okay. waiting to go upstairs. The whole and and they, they the, whole, the, whole, the whole lobby collapsed on the lobby inside. And it was just mayhem after that? No, just man, everybody tried to work their way out. Just trying to help all the brothers get out. A, a lot of people trapped inside. I was sitting in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, across from Brooklyn. We watched the first explosion. As we were watching the building, we saw a black, very large airplane fly right into the second building. It came out of the south. Right, right in front of our eyes. Just, it, it was so surreal, like a movie set. Second, second and third explosions also, right? We were in the building for the third one. It collapsed. It was on this drive here for the other one. Thank you, Bob. I'd say like 50% of what the units that were on scene. A lot of people in that building. Take off your jacket. We're just trying to leave the way out. Open up your jacket. Yeah, the right there. People that don't understand, there may be more. Any one of these fucking buildings can blow up. This ain't done yet. This is this is on top of this. This could be no worse than this. Could be nothing, nothing no more than this. You're in the building trying to help people, and it's exploding on the inside the building. So I don't think you get any worse than this. Tyrone Johnson. What's up? Sir, who are you trying to get a phone call to? I'll keep hitting redial. Uh, my can't get sister. Can't get a phone. 631-226-9595. Tell her I'm all right. What's your name? Jimmy. Jimmy Grillo. Not a 24. Jimmy, what, what happened? We were in the lobby gathering to go up and start doing a search on the upper floor. So as we were getting our gear on and making our way to the stairway, there was a uh, heavy-duty explosion. And everybody just started running for the door. Everybody was trapped. Eventually, when the dust lifted, I saw some light and started screaming for everybody to go out towards the light. I managed to get Tyrone out and a couple other guys that uh, have already gone over to Jersey City uh, by uh, via uh, a boat. It was fucked. It was unbelievable in there. This guy's still trapped. We couldn't get to it. Message to your family? Yeah, I'm alive. I'm okay. Well, 933 That's good. That's good. 2600. That's what Diane As tragedies go, what do you, are the people who do something like this that you don't even begin to? They're animals. They're animals. There should be an act of war. There should be war. Nobody's safe. We're not safe. Even the all these little buildings, we're not safe. Don't go too close. Jimmy, you said, what is your last name? Grillo. G-R-I-L-L-O. And what ladder company are you from? 24? 24 truck. Tyrone, is everyone safe? Take yeah. care of those. Hey, Jimmy, how are you doing? So far, everybody's all right. Yeah, okay. He's in the building. Sir? Hi. Hi. I go downstairs, the foreman tells me to go to remove the containers as I'm walking by the main freight car of the building in the corridor. That's, that's when I got blown. I mean, the impact of the explosion of whatever happened it threw me to the floor and that's when everything started happening. It knocked me right to the floor. You didn't know what it was. Of course, you're assuming something just fell over in the loading dock, something very heavy, something very big. You don't know what happened. And all of a sudden, you you, you just felt the, the floor moving, and you get up, and the walls. And then, you know I mean? Now I'm hearing that the, the, the main freight car, the elevators, you know what I mean, fell down. So I was right near the main freight car, so I assumed what that was. Then, you know what I mean, you heard that coming towards you. I was racing. I was going towards the bathroom. All of a sudden... 
I opened the door. I didn't know it was a bathroom. And all of a sudden, a big impact happened again. And all the ceiling tile was falling down. The light fixtures were falling, swinging out of the ceiling. And I come running out the door. And everything, the walls were down. And now I started running towards the parking lots. Nearly 100 floors below where the first plane hit, Phil felt the devastating impact. But four levels below ground, he had no idea terrorists had done it on purpose. What did you think was going on? I just thought something, because I know that the loading dock is on B1, that's three floors above me. I just assumed that a car or something exploded on B1 or something got delivered and something big and heavy fell over. You, you, you just knew it was something big because, you know, I, I can't even imagine living in San Francisco or earthquakes, but when the floor is moving underneath you, and everything is just happening, and smoke, and people screaming. It, that, then you just, you, I never knew. I never knew until like the, to this, when I got outside the building and I was running down the west side, that was the only time I ever heard about planes hitting the building. But before he got out of the building, he faced obstacles underground. As I ran into the parking lots, you know what I mean? Everybody's screaming. I actually helped somebody get to a staircase that had a broken leg. There was a lot of smoke down there. There was a lot of people screaming. People came with us running up the ramps. We wanted to get help for the people that couldn't move down there. And as we were running up the ramps, and, you know, it's not like a regular mall that you're going straight up. You have to go, you know, you got to go clear across the hole from one to one to two World Trade Center. You know what I mean? That's the way you got to run. And then all of a sudden, it happened all over again. Building 2 got hit. And then, again, I don't know that. I just know something else hit us to the floor. Right in the basement, you felt it. Walls were caving in. Everything that was going on. I mean, I know people that got killed in the basement. I know people that got broken legs in, their, in the basement. People that got reconstructed for surgery because the walls hit them in the face. And I know I'm just, I just, lo I love seeing everybody every day that survived it and was there. And, they, and I, I just hear everybody's story and it was terrible. No matter where you were in that building, there was no safe place to be except to get out, help as many people as you can and just enjoy just try to get out because it was there was devastation everywhere yeah here's one of the guys you can tell you i'm okay all right here hold on. you want to oh. call, call your mother or something we're we're hearing a number of large booms coming from that area we can only guess what is going on So what is your name and where were you on 9-11? Well, my name is Jeffrey Smith and my office was at 170 Broadway right up here in Maiden Lane. Uh, we opened the showroom at 10 o'clock in the morning. Actually, I was on the way down here. A second plane hit. Uh, people are standing here, everyone watching the buildings burning and burning and burning, you know, and, uh, and then something happened. There was visible light sources inside the building. There was a crackling sound in the air. And then it came over the police handhelds and it came over the fire handhelds right next to me. We have explosions and collapses in the building. This is from people between the 20th and 30th floor. Search teams in the 20th, 30th floor were reporting this far, far below the burning. An eyewitness who said there was an explosion on floor 7 to 8. 7 to 8. Videos uh, going off talking about explosions on the 20th floor. Were you near a firefighter? Everybody was near firefighters. They were ubiquitous. Everybody with a scan, and also everybody with a scanner in the city of New York, in Jersey, in in every, Staten Island. Everybody with a scanner heard that. Okay, that's why there's the widespread disbelief, because of what they actually heard and saw that day. Okay, now they can lie on a, on a stack of Bibles saying that this has been well investigated. It has not. And then, no matter what you believe about 9-11 happening that day, and that should be true, 
amazingly investigated. There's no doubt about what happened after 9-11, when they damn well knew how toxic this cloud was. Why? Because the U.S. Geologic Survey flew their instruments from Golden, Colorado, where the school of mines is, where they make Coors beer, and they deployed them around the burn. So they damn well knew by day three or four how complexly and powerfully toxic this cloud was. And they all told everybody coming back, come back to work, come back to work. We made it outside, we made it about a block. We made it at least two blocks, two blocks. and we started one. Floor by floor, it started popping out. It was like, it was if, if they had detonated. Dead, yeah, you know, detonated. They were planned yeah. to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. All the way down. I was watching right. it. And... Division 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, 5, 6, some small windows into um, what we thought was a core at some point and it looked like a, uh, an oven, you know, it was just roaring inside. It was just a bright, bright reddish orange color. See that stuff he's pulling out? What was that, Chief? You're gonna hold, we're going to hold off on the water. See the stuff he's pulling out? Yeah. It's red hot. If we hit it too much steam, you won't be able to see okay. what he's doing. Great. You have two 110-story office buildings. You don't find a desk. You don't find a chair. You don't find a telephone, a computer. The biggest piece of a telephone I found was half of the keypad, and it was about this big. The building collapsed to dust. So you just have this couple little puffs. Something's not right there, too. Now, people who say, okay, we heard, ex they, they claim they heard explosions. And so therefore, it must be bombs in the building. They're starting with assuming what did it, and then going back to assuming what problem they're solving, instead of determining first what happened. Well, if you recall, um, blasting zone ahead, you know, turn off cell phones and two-way radios just in case it trigger something. How are you going to get everyone to unknowingly turn off all their cell phones in southern Manhattan for weeks ahead while they prepare the site? But there were sounds of explosions. Bombs go boom, but not everything that goes boom is a bomb. Think of putting an egg in your microwave oven. Turns out there's a lot of folks who talked about these Scott packs exploding at ground level, sitting on the fire trucks. <laughs> 